Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. Today we're going to be talking about voltage clamping to protect the gate source of a low side N-channel MOSFET or an NMOS device. So most commonly we'll use a Zener voltage or a Zener uh, uh, diode to be able to do that and we're going to set the breakdown voltage to 15. The reason we do that is because even though we're still we're trying to protect it from going over 20 volts, setting it at 15 is the knee voltage. So we may get a volt that's on top of that. It may be 16 volts um, that could be maximally applied to this gate source. So we have four volts of over voltage safety margin. So we've set the, the Zener diode here. I have a drive signal that I've set to 24 volts. So if I apply 24 volts, we should see if this Zener is clamping or not. Uh, but there is a problem. So if you do this, if you connect the source directly to the Zener, what you're going to have is some bickering. So there's going to be some control and some fighting issues because now the Zener is saying, "I'm going to promise that I'm going to keep this, uh, or I'm going to keep this voltage low to protect the gate source." But the power source is saying, "I'm going to keep this voltage high, and I'm going to do whatever it is that I need to do with the charge to do that." And it wins because it has infinite amount of charge that it can produce within this simulation environment. So I'm gonna run the analysis in transient and show you that. So uh, let's gonna, I'm just gonna extend the window just a bit more so you can see it. Okay, so I have the voltage here, 24 volts. This is what gets applied to the pin. Well, that's 24 volts too. So the Zener is the one who lost out in that. And if I zoom up into the place where the voltage is high, say at 1.2 microseconds, or milliseconds, sorry, right there, so when 24 volts is applied, let's see how badly the Zener loses. Well, 8.8 .8 amps is being driven through that Zener in order to make sure that there's 24 volts there. So that would be unrealistic uh, in in real world say in real world setting because um, you don't have unlimited amount of charge. So it would be unpredictable what the behavior would occur uh, depending on the driver that's used. So in most cases, we put a current limiter there around 100 ohms. Sometimes it can go as low as 10 ohms, sometimes it can go as high as 1k uh, for typical values, but you can you can decide based on your application. So if I have 100 ohms here, this power supply should be able to regulate 24 volts on this pin, no problem, and the Zener should be able to clamp any voltages that go over that, and it has its domain, and the source has its domain, and now there's not a bickering issue. So if I run the simulation, that's what we see. 24 volts here at the input, and then we have 16 volts, nearly 16 volts, uh, at the gate. So that's uh, that's one, one thing that we can do. The next thing we're going to do is show the over voltage condition because we don't actually want uh, we don't want to run this all the time in the, where the Zener is active in every portion or every cycle of my com commutation cycle or uh, my voltage or whatever whatever signal if it's periodic we don't want the Zener to be operating all the time. We want a normal voltage there but then we want to be able to handle the emergencies and this power supply is going to perform some emergency for us. So if we put 100 volts there, we set the delay to come into one millisecond, set that to one nanosecond, one nanosecond, and then have this be a 10 microsecond pulse. This means that this is going to be 10 microsecond pulse of 100 volts. And it happens periodically every one millisecond. So now we're going to observe, excuse me, the behavior. We're going to go into it now. We're going to see a little spike on top of the voltage there. Right, it should have at this particular point. It should have only gone up to 12 volts, but at this particular moment, it went way above it and shot down here. So uh, I'm going to look at it just a little further into the window, and you can see now the voltage effects as a result of that. Now the maximum it goes up to is 17 volts, and then it kind of uh, ripples here, but that's going to still be consistent. And so you see that the output signaling it isn't really affected all that much. And these are supposed to be transient anyway. They're not supposed to happen periodically. Uh, so this Zener did its job. It successfully clamped that over voltage condition that occurred. Uh, now if we go into, uh, let's go into the analysis of the transient for the graph and try to locate this exact point and just see what the current is going through. So we're gonna choose 1.005 milliseconds. Right there. Okay, so right is the last data point. This is what's going to show in our indication. So there's one amp. There's one amp going through this Zener at that particular moment. And for the rest of the time, there's not going to be really any charge that's going to dump through there. So that's really it. That's really all there is to it. When you do your Zeners, just make sure that you have your current limiters there uh, just so that there's not a bickering effect. And then you can put on um, default conditioning resistors as well 
and uh, and then you have a very good signal conditioning circuit into a low side uh, end channel MOSFET or NMOS. Uh, if you were to increase this to nearly 50k, something like that, or within the range of this resistor, the default is now you've created a resistor divider. Uh, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't set this to 50k, but the point is to, is to make sure that all, the charge that you want at the time that you want it uh, is able to build up on the terminal and you're able to turn off and turn on the MOSFET as you uh, as you desired. So keep this around 100 ohms, maybe 100k, or, uh, maybe 1k, sorry, uh, and then you should be good. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.